Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here up on the seventh part of this little mini series on the Shepherd of Hermas coming out of Similitudes 9 of the Shepherd of Hermas. In this part, we're going to go into more detail about what it means to take on the name of the Son of God and, and how it is that we are to be saved. We're going to touch on the childhood of Yehoshua HaMashiach and compare Hermas to when he was led up on a mountain and those things to which he was tempted by Satan. We're going to touch on a little bit of the eschatology and what it means to backslide in this class and we're going to give our personal testimonies on how this stuff played out in our lives just to give you an example since this is a voiceover you can feel free to do other stuff as you listen to the class maybe you got some chores to do or maybe you're driving or such things be prepared to leave your comments as we go comments really help out the class and it helps out our channel helps get the word out and go ahead and hit that like button it does help youtube to decide to put our classes out all right y'all let's get to it our Heavenly Father, hallowed be your name, Abba, we ask you to come by here and continue to impart wisdom and understanding on us as we continue this Bible study of your word so that we may teach your people what you would have them to know. In your son's name we pray, amen. Amen. And so be it. 121. Then said I, what is this tower? This said he is the church. And what, sir, are these virgins? He said unto me, these are the Holy Spirits. For no man can enter into the kingdom of God except these clothe him with their garments. All right. Um, now, I want to reference back to uh, verse 120 that we did in the last class where it's talking about his name. Because we hear here in 2019 and, you know, everybody wants to, you know, go on to the higher mansions or whatever. We know that it's only through the name of God that we've saved, that we are saved. We hear that, you know, we hear the Reverend Pastor Deacon Dr. Doug tell us that all the time that, you know, we can only be saved through his name. Right. Right. But he never tells us his name. Right. In fact, a lot of times he calls him Jesus. Yeah. Which is actually the only name that is actually wrong. Mm. Right. Yeah, because he always say you must be saved and and they always say the name of Jesus. Well, and like I said, that's the only name that is wrong because the, the name, the name Jesus is the only name that he couldn't have been named. You've come. A, yeah. Where did he get that J from? Yeah. And let's come over here just just for you guys watching the show, watching the class. Let's see. Uh, we look here and looking at the letter J. How did J get its sound? Both I and J were used interchangeably by scribes to express the sound of both the vowel and the consonant. It wasn't until 1524 when Gian Giorgio Trissini, an Italian Renaissance grammarian known as the father of the letter J, made a clear distinction between the two sounds in other words this dude created the letter j yeah it wasn't created until uh sometime after the 1500s and we know that the messiah was there long long before then yeah so when when you think about it, if you think about the letter j didn't exist before 1524 there was actually no way his name could have been jesus yeah when you go to the encyclopedia you know when they the, the first uh, thing you see when you open it up, it tells you about that letter that it's about to talk about, you know, the subject is about to talk about. And I learned from there how the letter J was created long after the Messiah. Right. So, earth. so you call him the Messiah. You call him Yahushua uh, HaMashiach. You can call him the Christ. You can call him the Son of God. You can call him the Word of God. You can call him, what's all them names they call him? Yeah. They call him... Um, Mashiach, um, they call him Yeshua, yeah. Yehoshua. Yeah, um, there's a there's a lot of names you hear people calling it. You know the 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 Christ on on especially when you listen to a lot of YouTube videos. There's a lot of different names, but the only one that's abs actually absolutely wrong is Jesus. Yep, and that's the one that everybody calls him. But then we hear that you know it is only it is only through his name that we're saved. So it's important that we. Understand the name, wouldn't you think? Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to find out who the name is right here in these next few verses. Looking right here in verse 1 and 21, he starts to give us a, an idea. When you put 120 together, it says, Wherefore, therefore, shall not take upon his name, he shall not enter into the kingdom of God. So you have to have his name. And then you look at down here in 121. Uh, these are the Holy Spirits, for no man can enter into the kingdom of God except these clothes him with their garment. Yep, this is talking about the name. We're about to find out who the name is. 122. For it will avail these nothing to take upon the name of the Son of God, 
unless thou also receive the garment from them. For these virgins are the powers of the Son of God. So shall a man in vain bear his name, unless he shall be also endued with his power. Here is the name of the Son of God. This is his name. These powers, these 12 virgins, these 12 virtues, I show them to you right here, are the name of God. And if, you do, if we don't take on his name, which include these 12 right here, if we don't take on these 12 right here, we are actually taking his name in vain. And that's what it means to take the Lord's name in vain, is to say, I am a Christian or I love Jesus, but yet you don't have love, yet you don't have truth, yet you, you are a lying spirit. You have no power, you have no faith, but yet you got your big Jesus piece swinging from around your neck. That's what it means to take the Lord's name in vain. So it's not necessarily the audible word that you speak. It's the 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 the, the characteristics, the spirits, the the lifestyle, the personality, the things that you take on when you say put on the whole armor, the 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 the, the, the whole the, armor of God. Yeah, the to the, the spirits that you take on. He is those spirits. That is his name. Right. Yep. Yeah. And and yeah. That's what it means to take on his name is to put on those spirits. Mm. Yeah. That has helped me a lot. Yeah. 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 So, so and that's what it means when he said there's going to be a lot of people in the end times hollering Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. But they ain't going to be saved because they're going to be doing just that. They're just going to be saying Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. They are not going to put on the 12 virtues. Yeah. Well, that brings the importance how. Uh, how important it is to get about doing it now because when the last days come or when the father, you know, say it's time, um, you ain't, you don't, you won't have, you won't have truth. You won't have faith. I mean, you won't have, I mean, because this is a, you build up faith, right? Right. You, you won't have, uh, forgiveness, uh, all of those things. You just can't say Jesus and enter into the kingdom. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to have to have these. these you're going to have virtues. to learn this stuff. Yeah, you're you going to have to learn to be cheerful. Stuff. You're going to have to learn to have love and charity for, for each other. This is for a lot of us. This is not inherent to our nature. You know, and this the scripture in one place in the third testament, I believe it tells us in order to be successful in the era in which we live, we had to have stuff like selfishness. We had to be greedy. We had to be arrogant. We had to take on a lot of these negative traits over here in order to to even you know be successful you know and to be you know uh successful people walking around we had to take on the negative traits so you know these these um perfect virgins over here these these virtues over here we're going to have to learn those we're going to have to learn to be patient with each other have self-restraint and faith hmm yeah. And so that's what he means when he says, I say it again, that's what he means is there going to be a lot of people saying the audible name, Jesus, 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 and they ain't going to be saved. You know, the father, what does he say? I'm, I'm going to say I never knew you. It's because you never knew him. They never knew him. They never knew long suffering. They never knew simplicity or innocence or, you know, they never knew truth or understanding. They never did take on the virgins. They well, never. that's, you know, one of the. Um one of those Ten Commandments where it say you should not take up on the name of the Lord in vain. So it's not talking about, you know, when we were kids, we we couldn't say. Uh, the word spelled mad dog backwards. Mad dog backwards. Yeah, when you say, yeah, when you spell out mad dog and say it backwards. Oh, yeah, yeah. You they, can... they always taught us that that was taking the Lord's name in vain. Yeah, why would they do that? Because they didn't understand. They didn't know what his name was because the shepherd of Hermas was left out of our text. The shepherd, Herm shepherd of Hermas was, was supposed to be uh, the, the 67th book of the Bible. It was at one point, but before King James released the Bible in 1611, the Catholic Church had fell out of love with, with the shepherd of Hermas and they kicked it out of the Bible. Well, this is very important because... You know, it tells us in Scripture that if you call upon the name of the Father, you know, if you ask Him for for things, you know, that you should have have those things, you know, if you need them, and you know, um, but if we're calling upon the name of what? Well, look, I've noticed that I, before I, I I start, you know, started trying to walk into the truth, um, I would. Know that scripture, call upon the name of the Lord, and you should have, you know, have, have certain things. 
And I would call upon Jesus and I still wouldn't get him. And it's not necessarily, it's not talking about calling up on a name, you know, like Stacy, uh, Carla, or Dan, or Eddie. It's talking about having these virtues. When you have truth, then you can go to the Father. When you have patience, then you can go to the Father and ask the things that you need. And if you need them, He will He will supply your needs. But well, yeah, well, the thing is, when you start to obey the commandments, when you start to obey the, the commands and the rules, and you start to put on these virtues, what happens is you start to get angelic help with stuff. The angels come in and they start to, 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 to help you. And, and so, yeah, just calling on his name is not going to help you. Putting on these virtues and putting on these virgins is what's going to actually give you a name with the Father, and that's what's going to actually help you in the end. You look right here in Daniel chapter 12, verse 4, it's talking about how knowledge will increase in the end times. So Daniel, what Daniel is talking about is how these books like Enoch and Hermes and Jubilees and Jasher are, start, are going to be available for people in the end times. I mean, all you got to do is get on Google and Google, you know, Enoch chapter 1 and it'll show you. You can Google Jubilees and it'll pull up the whole book for free and you can sit there and read it. Hermes, just type in the Shepherd of Hermes on Google and it'll give you like three or four different translations that you can read. Even on YouTube, they have the audio book that you can listen to for free. That's why the knowledge will increase because all of this information that was hidden from the, the, the children of the father back during the Council of Nicaea 312 A.D., when they, you know, decided that the Bible would only include 66 books, um, when they hid those books from us, we can now find these books and we can now read this information. That's the thing, because this is just so, so important, because, you know, it says, also says that whosoever shall call upon the name shall be saved, but, you know, and we got people in, like, my the, when I used to attend church, this is what they're doing. They're calling upon the name for salvation, and they're they got you, you know, calling Jesus, 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 Jesus for hours and hours and hours, uh, and that's the truth. And and it's not talking about that. No. Yet, and still, we walk out of the church, uh, quote unquote, filled with the Holy Spirit. But you know, the next day, I'm gossiping, I'm lying, I'm, I'm you know, I'm mean. Um, all this other stuff. You don't stuff. have any yeah. your perfect dishes because you know you believe. What did you say? People are people. People coming out of the church praising money and telling you know other you know um, uh, the saints of God how they can't survive without money. When the Bible tells you you cannot serve both God and money, you have the Reverend Pastor Deacon Doctor Doug telling you that you need to go get a job. You, you don't have any self-restraint. You don't have any power. You're coming out of church in, in pleasure, jumping in your, your new Lexus as you, you know, drive off. You, you're sad because your prayers are not being answered. Like you said, you're talking about each other, so you have maliciousness in your heart. You got the lady in the red dress up there. It's all lustful and stuff. You're angry. People people come out of the church on Sunday, quote like you said, quote, full of the Holy Ghost, but yet they fussing all week long. They're lying on each other, acting foolish and prideful with a bunch of hatred. Yeah. And why is because they sitting there, like you say, for hours and hours and hours talking about Jesus, 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 Jesus. So you I mean, are they literally just saying the word over and over? Yeah. Jesus? Yeah. You're literally just saying the word over, 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 over again. Just by, and, 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 so, and you're not taking on any of the virtues that is truly the name of the father and it just makes so much sense to me. So you don't know what the name of God is. And so that's why when at the end times. You, you're not going to know him and he's not going to know you. And, you know, it's, 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 you know, that name, that that word, J-E-S-U-S, is not going to help you. Right. It's, it's not it's not going to help you. Not saying that, you know, praying, you know, and, and, and stuff will, will do nothing for you. Remember, the father does understand your heart. And if this is the first right. time you've heard the word, you know, that Jesus is a made up word, you know, you, you know, the father understands that, you know, you may be having, you may have been in ignorance and you truly was calling, you know, for him to help you. So he did honor that and he will honor that. But when he talks about the name in which you will be saved. You're going to have to put these word first on or you are not going to be saved. Mm. You're not going to be saved. And the church, they changed the words up just like they changed what it means to take the Lord's name in vain. They also changed what it means to be saved. Oh, yeah. You know, they say we saved, you know, talking like present tense or past tense. I've been saved. Saved from what? 
What have you been saved from? The, the, the tribulation hasn't started yet. You know, you're, you're talking something past tense to something future. How do you know you're going to be saved in the tribulation? Mm. Wow. Yeah, that's very, very eye-opening. Okay. Let's go on. 123. And he said unto me, Saw thou these stones that were cast away? They bore indeed the name, but put not on their garment. I said, sir, what is their garment? Their very name, said he, are their garment. Yep. So the the you you have to put on the. You virgin. have to start doing. You have to start doing. Say you can't say I have patience, but you know uh, you're constantly chopping at your kids for for you know them being too slow or them not coming when you a timely manner or, or things like that. You have to put on. You have to put on patience. Patience has to become a garment that encloses you at all times. Mm. Right? Like your skin. It yeah. has to be it has to be a part of you. That's who you are. Now you notice right here it's talking about these rejected stones. Now he's talking about it at one point the tower the tower is struck and some of the stones changed colors and then they were rejected and put out of the out of the tower. It says because they they bore indeed the name they carry the name, but then they actually didn't put them on. They didn't let the they didn't let the virtues en engulf them. You know, they didn't let the virtues take over them. Mm -hmm. You know, like you know, they they you know, like 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 for me, for instance, cheerful. I, I understand what it means to be cheerful, but you know, one could argue that I'm not a very cheerful person. You know, I'm not cheerful as I should be. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, let me see another one that I struggle with up here. Self-restraint um, or uh, or charity. I know what it means to, to have charity for my brother or love for my brother. But, you know, did I go out today and try to do a good deed for somebody? You know, did I, you know, did I? You know, and that's what it means. I, when it means right, that's what it says right here. They, they bore the name and deed. But putting out on their garment. It has to be a part of you. It has to be a part, part of, of you. you. Right. In order for you to make it into the tower. And remember again that the, being a part of the tower means that you're going to survive the tribulation. Those that are in the tower, securely rested in the tower, will survive the tribulation. They will be the ones who go on after five billion people have been annihilated off of this pet planet, killed through war, famine, diseases, uh, earthquakes, and all kinds of stuff. It's going to kill a lot of people in over this seven-year tribulation or this ten-year tribulation. Those people that survive it will be those that are inside the tower. And, you know, they, and, and these individuals, they are going to have the virtues, you know, because, you know, it is these negative ones that are actually going to kill people. Hatred is going to kill people. Anger is going to kill people. Like, look, think of like road rage, how road rage you have two individuals there arguing on the road. One jumps out and shoots the other one. You know what I mean? That that kind of that is what's going to actually have people killed in the end times. Wow. I'm sitting here thinking about how thinking about some of these virtues and how, uh, you know, take the virtue, the one of the virtues, cheerfulness, and and how you know a cheerful person when you see a cheerful person, and they're just naturally cheerful. You say, well, they're just naturally. That's just naturally how she acts with it. Sometimes you know, you know, they just faking. They, a person can't really be like that. But that's the person that has taken on. A the cheerful virtue and it just has become a part of them. Right. Yeah. You know, and it's some, something that you excuse me. And it's something that you envy. I do, and I'm like, wow, I wish I could be like that. But th that's a good thing. That's yeah. a good thing. At some point, you have to realize, yeah, you have you. Ha it's, it's necessary to be cheerful. Mm -hmm. And the opposite being angry. If you are, if you are an angry person, you're not going to go into the kingdom of heaven. You are not going to be saved. You are not You're going to be one of the rejected stones carried back off into the place where you came from. And, you know, what that means is that you're going to die in a tribulation. You are going to go into the spirit world where you will finish your your purification. If you didn't get enough purification here on the earth, if, you know, and, and you didn't go through enough pain to completely purify you. You'll spend time and throw my hands up, quote, uh, hell. 
where you will, you we will basically be inundated with your consciousness that's going to bear on to you and bring this fire on you until you are purified and then you will be um, reborn as one of the children who reincarnated as one of the children who make it through the tribulation you'll become one of their children in a purified body in a in an incorruptible body and then you will live on You'll live on through until, you know, this whole planet goes up in the flames about a thousand years from now. And then you'll go on to the other higher mansions. Mm. This is Hermes Academy, y'all. We teach, we teach, we teach the word over here, you know. I don't know what, you know, what Reverend Pastor Deacon Dr. Doug or T.D. Jakey, T.D. Jakey or Kenneth Culpable are teaching over there. But, you know, we teaching you what the scriptures say over here. Mm -hmm. 124. Therefore, whosoever beareth the name of the Son of God ought to bear their names also, for the Son of God also himself beareth their names. So he's putting together, he's putting these together that the Son of God and these names go hand in hand. If you don't, like I said up there, not another verse, if you don't take on these garments, you are taking his name in vain. You, 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 you are taking the name of God in vain and set up there in 122. It, and it would, and notice right here it says even even the Son of God Himself had to put on these virtues. Mm -hmm. If you read there's there's a there's a few books in this. Let me see. I'm looking. Stacy has the uh, um, hard copy. She has the hard copy uh, lost books of the Bible, forgotten books of the Eden. Let me come up and look at your table of contents here. This one book is called Mary Half Chapters, which talks about Mary. There's another one over here called uh, Protoevangelism. I can't remember what that was. But there's two in here called Infancy. Infancy Gospel. There's Infancy Gospel 1 and Infancy Gospel 2 where it talks about the Son of God. Where it talks about uh, his, childhood? his childhood. And, you know, he didn't have all of the virtues on when he was a kid. <laughs> he didn't. He, he, he killed one little dude. One little kid was picking on him, and he killed the dude. <laughs> you know what I mean? He brought him back to life, but, you know, he killed him. Yeah. You know? Yeah, so, you know, so that, that showed a little bit of anger there. Yeah. You know, I hope I'm not being blasphemous or whatever, but, you know, he put the smack on the little kid, and that wasn't the only one of the only. He did a few other little things, too. Mm -hmm. When you read that book, you know, read about his childhood. But, um, you know, by the time he, when he was baptized and the Christ came and inundated his life, he then became the person we love and speak of today. The person we know and speak of today, it, because then he did have all of the 12 virtues, all of the 12 virtues was a part of his life then. Yeah. You know, throughout the scriptures, we read about his long suffering, his faith. You know, everything he did was through the Father, uh, his love for people, just all of it. Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, and, you know, I don't want to drag this on too much, but the Reverend Pastor Deacon Dr. Doug is over there hollering how you have to take on the name of Jesus. But, you know, Jesus had to take on this name right here. You know, we're saying we're supposed to be like Jesus. Well, this is what Jesus was right here. This is how he was right here. And to be like him means to put on these 12 virtues. Hmm. Okay. Number 125. All right. As for those stones, continued he, which being delivered by their hands, thou sawest remain in the building, they were clothed with their power. For they, for which cause thou seest the whole tower of the same color with the rock, and made as it were of one stone. Yep. So the, the way this tower is built. You have us who are represented by stones in this vision are carried by these 12 virtues. And as we're being carried by these 12 virtues, we put on their names. They become a garment. And then our color is changed to be like those that are in the tower. Those people we're talking about like Seth and Enoch and Mahalalel and Jared and Noah, even Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. We start to be like them. And that's what it means to be in the tower is when our message, our lifestyle, our, the way we are is consistent with the way they were. Mm -hmm. You know, just just remember how this thing is going to play out. There's not going to be any evil people after the tribulation. There's not there's not going to be any wickedness on the planet. All wickedness is going to destroy each other. Everything wicked is going to kill each other. 126. So also those who have the 126. 
So also those who have believed in God by his Son have put on his Spirit. Behold, there shall be one Spirit and one body and one color of their garments, and all they shall attain this, who shall bear the names of those virgins. So that's what it means. This is what it means to be in a tower, is to, to have these garments on. It's really important. I guess that's why I keep saying it over and over. We have to have these on if we plan on surviving the tribulation. You know, Don't fall for that whole left behind thing. The, you actually want to be left behind. The, the guys that's going to be, quote, raptured are going to be these guys over here, the guys who are in pleasure. That's why they're talking about being raptured is because they don't want to give up their pleasure. They don't want to take on these virgins. And so but they're going to church and paying tithes every day, you know, or every week. And so in order for them to make sense, they start telling them that, yeah, you're going to be raptured supernaturally, you know, taken off the planet. Well, that supernatural removing from the planet may come in the form of a nuclear bomb and you're going to spend time in the, pure, in the spirit world where then you're going to learn these virtues over here. You, you're either going to be purified on the earth, which a lot of us are doing now. We're learning the virtues now, hoping to make it into, hoping to be a member of this tower so we could be the parents of humanity going forward. But for those who are, for those who don't really care about such things and, you know, just want to get off this planet and, you know, they're going to die. This is just so important because, and like you said, I don't want to re just keep repeating it, but in order to get into this tower, you got to take on these virgins. You know, this is what this whole book of Hermes is about, taking on these virgins in yeah. order to, to get into this tower. And as I said, once you, once you get into the hands of the virgins and they place you into the tower, then you... You, you take on the, the the same status, not quite as, as good. You're not the foundation and the, the chief stones, but you take on sort of the same status as uh, Moses, Abraham, Jacob, Joshua, uh, uh, our forefathers, uh, the status that they have. So it's just it's just really important. I, I'm, I'm seeing how important this this is. Yeah. And this is what this book is all about. Yeah. That's why it was so important when he said, you know, don't labor in vain. These stones have to go through the hands of the virgins. If they don't go through the hands of virgins, they're going to be taken out. Rejected. And you just, yeah, you, you're just laboring in vain. Don't do that. Yeah. Pass them to the virgins so that they can take on these characteristics <laughs> and go into the tower. Yeah. 127. And I said, Sir, why then were those stones cast away which were rejected, seeing they also were carried through the gate and delivered by the hands of these virgins into the building of this tower? Okay, now it's talking about individuals who did take on the, the virtues, okay? and But yet, when the tower was whacked, remember one of the classes we talked about how the, the, um, the Son of God came back, the venerable angel, the tall angel came back, he viewed the tower, he took every stone out of the tower and looked at it and inspected it. He even took a rod and whacked that stone mm -hmm. and some of those rods changed color. So that's what he's talking about. They, they were carried in mm -hmm. by the virgins, but they were whacked. And, and, and change colors. Why, why did this happen? Why did they end up getting rejected like this? Okay, I want to say too. 128. Seeing said he, thou takest care to inquire diligently into all things, here also concerning those stones which were rejected. All these received the name of the Son of God, and with that, the power of these virgins. All right, now notice he's putting them together, the Son of God and the powers of these virgins. You know, the, the, the name of the Son of God and the power of the virgins are one. They are the same. 129. Having therefore received these spirits, they were perfected and brought into the number of the servants of God. And they began to be one body and to have one garment, for they were endued with the same righteousness, which they alike exercised. So they were placed into the tower. They were in the tower. They were happy sitting there amongst their fellow stones. And everybody was happy until the Son of God is going to come, inspect the stones, and even whack them with a rod. So let's see what happens to what happened to them after they got hit with this stick. Okay. 130. But after that, they beheld those women which thou sawest clothed with a black garment, with their shoulders at liberty, and their hair loose. 
They fixed their desires upon them, being tempted with their beauty, and were clothed with their power, and cast off the clothing of the virgins. So they were sitting in a tower, happy, like you said, clothed. They had the, they had the, the garments of the twelve uh, virtues on. They were struck with the rod. But when they were struck with the rod, as if they were tempted, they saw the the uh, the other women, the, these uh, women that were clothed in black uh, over here, and they they liked them better. So instead of wanting to be cheer, they was cheerful. But then when they saw anger come, they liked anger, and so they put on angry. Uh, they were chaste or had purity at one point, but then they became lustful. They they were simple people at one point, but then they became sad or they were, you know. But at, at some point, they like it says, they saw these other women and they, they wanted them instead. They became lustful. That reminds me of like when you're uh, fasting as far as food. And you're doing good. You don't went three or four days fasting. And you got two or three more days to go. And all of a sudden, somebody show up with a cake. Yep. Now, you need to go in the other room, get on your hands and knees and start praying. But what do you do? You get that cake and you start just sitting there looking at it. Yep. And all of a sudden, you, you slice and you a piece. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah. And that's yeah. what they did. That's why they were rejected. Because they they, they wanted a piece of that cake. They, they would... And, what does it say? They would rather have the beauty of them. And no, they're, they're beautiful. You you like being angry. People who are angry like being angry. Yeah. People who are are selfish, they prefer selfishness over over charity. People prefer uh ma maliciousness. You know? They would rather have lust than purity. Mm -hmm. You know, and so at one point these people, you know, were sitting in a tower. But as soon as, you know, they were tempted, as soon as, you know, these wicked women presented themselves, a whole lot of them ran over there to them. Mm -hmm. And they became they, they gave up love in order for hatred. They'd rather have hatred instead of concord. They'd rather be prideful. And mm -hmm. so that's what they did. And then once they did, they got rejected. They got kicked out of the tower. Mm -hmm. It's like, is that like backsliding? Yeah, that's is absolutely what black sliding is. That's another one of the words that the Reverend Pastor Deacon Dr. Dove changed. You know, what did he change it to? You don't show up on church on time or, yeah. you know, that he changed that to being backsliding. No, what backsliding means is that person wanted to be angry. That person slid from these virtues and slid back over to these little nasty women over here. Perfidiciousness mm -hmm. and infidelity. They, they went back. They slid back over there to incontinence. Yeah, you know, growing up in the church, you they call backsliding, you know, you go from wearing dresses to wearing pants and all of a sudden, you know, back yeah, backsliding or something yeah. like that. But it has Talking back to, to the pastor or yeah, something. Uh -huh. You, know you I mean? don't, don't come to church every day and uh, that's backsliding. All right. What verse are we on now? We're on 131, the last one of this paragraph. Okay. It goes, therefore, were they cast off from the house of God and delivered to those women? But they that were not corrupted with their beauty remained in the house of God. This said he is the signification of those stones which were rejected. All right. So basically boils down to they preferred the, the or I'm, I'm going to put it this way. They allowed the wicked women to come back in their life. That's why they were rejected. Our Heavenly Father, hallowed be your name. Lord, we ask you to come by here and continue to impart wisdom on us as we continue to try to understand your message that you would have us to learn out of the Shepherd of Hermas. In your son's name we pray, amen. Amen. And so be it. All right, what verse are we on now? We're on verse 132. All right, 132. And I said, Sir, what if any of these men shall repent? And cast away the, their desire of those women, and be converted, and return to these virgins, and put on again their virtues. Shall they not enter into the house of God? All right. So this is Hermes trying to understand if these guys are going to get another shot. Now, in the last class, we talked about how and why they were rejected. The, ver the people that were rejected were people who were solidly in the tower. They had on the virtues of the twelve virgins. They decided that they, you know, preferred some one or some of the uh, virtues of the wicked women, and they left the the uh, the the virgins there in name of the wicked women, and 
and they got rejected. Some of them were kicked far from the tower. Some of them were, you know, set outside or close to the tower. And so Hermes is wondering now, are they going to get a second chance? 133. They shall enter, said he, if they shall lay aside all the works of these women and shall resume the power of these virgins and shall walk in their work. Let me, let me tell you how this played out in my life to make it make some, make some sense. Um, I read The Shepherd of Hermes back in about 1995, 1996, 1997. I read it about two times, you know, and I understood the message and it became a part of my life. I remember being at work at one point. I said this in one of the classes, how the, the, the scene, one of the senior managers came into my office one day and, you know, was basically complaining that, you know, she, she said, uh, you seem not to let any of this stuff get to you. Like you like you aren't bothered by any of it. And I was trying to explain the, the book of Hermes to her, trying to say, no, we're not supposed to be angry. We're not supposed to be fussing and all this. And to her, it, it didn't seem she didn't really understand. She was trying to tell me, no, you're supposed to get angry in a meeting when, when things aren't going your way. You're supposed to, you know, you're supposed to, you know, let them know you're supposed to, you know, show some outrage or whatever. So I had on these virtues. I had the, these virtues were a part of my life. But in 2014, I was basically whacked with the rod where I was given the opportunity. To, well, I was more than an opportunity. I was basically forced out of the lifestyle that I was in. And um, me and my wife chose to move back down here into the lifestyle that we're in down here. We came down here around some of my wife's family members. And when we got down here. Uh, we started going through some of the persecutions and different things of, you know, individuals around that naturally can't blame the people, just natural stuff we had to go through. And I put away some of those virtues and start putting on some of the the uh, the traits of the negative women. For instance, I, be I for instance, I became angry. That was one of my main things that I did is I became angry. I became sad. Uh, I may have put on a little bit of pleasure. I put on these traits and I was basically kicked out of the tower. Hmm. Whereas before I had been comfortably in the tower, I'm going to say up until 2013, 2014, I was comfortably in the tower. I knew I was in the tower. But then after I put on these negative virtues, I was kicked out of the tower. But praise the Lord, I was only set close to the tower and given an opportunity to, to do what, what uh, Hermes is being told here. I was able to lay aside the works of those wicked women and resume the power of the virgins. And that's where I'm at in the spiritual walk now is I am now I am, I am learning to resume the powers of the virtues and trying to walk in their works again. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. so I'm, I'm now putting off stuff like anger and pleasure and uh, all the other ones I mentioned. Uh, patience. Uh, uh, yeah, prideful. Never... I become prideful at one point. Yeah. And, and, you know, and so I had to relearn that. And it, it, and what it boils down to is that, that it didn't take any work the first time. The first time to get in the tower, like I said, I read mm, the book. I wow. understood, you know, that it was, you know, that I was supposed to be cheerful, that I was supposed to be simple, that I was supposed to be powerful and faithful. And it was like, OK, I can do that. And I did it. Mm -hmm. And so I ended up going in the tower. Right. But then when I had when then when I was struck with that rod. That's when my true colors came out and mm -hmm. found out, you know, I wasn't that cheerful. I was mm -hmm. actually kind of angry. Mm -hmm. You know, I wasn't very, I wasn't very concord. I didn't have much concord or harmony in my life. I was actually a prideful person. Mm -hmm. And that's when I was actually rejected out of the tower and laid back beside the tower. And now, you know, now that I'm back trying to get into Hermes, I am now relearning this stuff. So are you finding or are you saying that when you first took on these traits, these first took on these virtues that it was easy to get on the tower. Now, trying to get back into the tower seems harder. Yeah, be, be, yeah, because the first time, you know, I, I hadn't been struck before. There was nothing that, that right. was there was, you know, I hadn't really been tempted with any of those those negative virtues before. And so I hadn't been tried before. I hadn't I hadn't gone through any trials before. And so and so now I'm going through trials and now I'm learning. You know, okay. and, you know, I think, you know, just to go off script a little bit and start talking about what I think, I think it had to do a lot with, you know, having to give these classes. You know, you have to understand this stuff. Yeah. Like I said, in one of the classes, how you going to be, how you going to be the teacher and you ain't never had to be, how you going to be the God and you ain't have never had to go through anything. Mm-hmm. 
you know, so now I'd have had to go through all of this stuff, almost all of these, you know, virtues. I've had to, you know, I've walked with all of these wicked women firsthand. They're some nasty wenches. I was wondering, I'm sitting here wondering when the, when the, when, when Satan appeared to the Messiah and he tempted him, um, was some of these virtues included into the temptation? You know, he tempted him with food that would be uh, long-suffering, you know, because he had fasted for so many days. He tempted him with uh, having, you know, all the riches of this world that was pride. Uh, he tempted him with, you know, uh, call upon me uh, as the, the father and, you know, serve me. And that was faith. Because, you know, just tempting him with food, that, that you know, that he would have known that he couldn't tempt him with anything physically. Would these virtues be included into, like, these women be included into the temptation? Well, let's go over here and look. Matthew chapter 4, verse, well, let's mean Matthew chapter 4. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command thee these stones to be made bread. Um, that would have, that would fall under patience, mm -hmm. because remember the, the 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 he was he would have been hungry up there. He was up there yeah. for forty days, and you know that would have been a little bit of patience instead of waiting on the father. He would have had a chance to you know change it and make it turn it into bread himself, fix the problem himself. So that well, would have been patience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's the other one? Um. And then the devil taketh him up on a holy city and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple and saith unto them, if, if thou be the son of God and cast thyself down, for it is written, thou shalt have his angels chart, um, let's see, cast thyself down. Which one would this fall under? Um, self-restraint. I guess uh, it could fall under self-restraint or power. Um. Or it's, he was testing him of his faith, really. Yeah, He's saying, if you got yeah. all this faith, jump off the rock. Mm -hmm. You know, see if you're really faithful or not. If you got faith, jump on down there. Um, and what was the other one? They take him to an exceeding high place and show him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And say if unto him, all these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. That's pride. Mm -hmm. That's pridefulness. So he so he was. He was tempted by, by all of these. Um... Well, he wasn't tempted by all of them, but he was tempted by those ones. Yeah, yeah. Yep, you're right. Good point. Number 134. All right, 134. And for this cause, there is a stop in the building, that if they shall repent, they may be added to the building of this tower. But if they shall not repent, that others may be built in their places, and so they may be utterly cast away. All right, so we should add this to the chronology of this thing is, so the tower is stopped. So if I understand this correct, the tower has been stopped building now. Mm -hmm. Because we are in this, this trial period where we are, we, us, rejected stones. I guess I'm one of the rejected stones. I'm learning today during this class. Now that I'm one of the rejected stones trying to get back in this tower, there is a break in the building. There is no building going on right now. You know, and, you know, giving us the chance to get back in the tower. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Giving you a chance to, you know, stop from doing those actions, those uh, 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 negative women. Yeah. Put and, them off. And, and start getting back to the uh, to the virgins. Yeah. And yep. Yeah. So that and he said that's why there was a break in the tower. That's why they stopped building. So, you know, given, 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 like I said, giving us a chance. It's yes, appreciate it. Thank you very much. Because, mm -hmm. you know, we really want to be in that tower. Yeah. You know, I, I may not make it into the tower, you know, you know, personally, you know, you know, for a number of reasons. Other than the wicked women, there's, there's, there's other reasons why people won't survive the tribulation. Some will be martyrs, you know, some, you know, it, it, there's various reasons. But, you know. At least my kids will be able to go on. If I can put on these traits and make it through, whether I'm a martyr or not, you know, my kids still will go on to be members of this tower. And, you know, that that's fine with me. So, My wife don't like to hear about that part. She gets quiet. Yeah, I'm continuing. 135. For all these things, I gave thanks unto the Lord, that being moved with mercy towards all those upon whose his name is called, he sent to us the angel of repentance 
to preside over us who have sinned against him, and that he has refreshed our spirits which, al which were almost gone, and who had no hope of salvation, but are now refreshed to the renewal of life. Now that's what this book should be redoing to a lot of people, and it is. You know, I can tell from the comments that people are giving, and I appreciate you guys' comments, that, you know, a lot of people are getting good stuff out of this out of this Shepherd of Hermes. I hope so. Yeah, they, they actually are, are learning this, this parable and learning how this is all working. And there's a lot of people that are getting a lot out of it. They're, they're, what does it say here? They're being refreshed by this information. Then I said, show me now, sir, why this tower is not built upon the ground, but upon a rock and upon the gate. He replied, thou art foolish and without understanding. Therefore, thou ask this. <laughs> yeah. Um, he already told you that who the rock is. He told you that the rock is the, is the, uh, is the son of God. He told you, you know, and so now you're asking, why, did, why is it built upon the rock? Uh, yeah. Uh, Herman, did you fall asleep during that part of the, <laughs> of the class? Yeah, it's, it has to be. He's, he's going to go on to tell him why here. 137. And I said, sir, I must need ask all things of you because I understand nothing at all. For all your answers are great and excellent, and which a man can hardly understand. Understand that Hermas was a real dude, though. He 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 was pious. He his his biggest problem was like 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 Job. He was letting his kids do whatever they wanted to do. I don't know if you guys realize that in the story of Job or not, but that's what got Job in trouble is that his kids was out there having birthday parties and doing all <laughs> kinds of little wicked stuff. And, you know, like and that's what got Hermes in trouble is that he wasn't chastising his kids properly. And so but Hermes is just a regular old dude, a regular old person. And, you know, a lot of this stuff is coming to him, you know, within days. He's seeing a lot of this stuff and he doesn't have a lot of time to, to think about it. You know, I've been thinking about this stuff, like I said, for almost 20 years. And I'm I'm still some of it. I'm still learning every day. I just learned a few minutes ago that I was a re rejected stone. I'm in a rejected state right now. So you can imagine, you know, how Hermes is, you know. Know, and you know it was just yesterday that the tower had finished being built so you know you can't really blame Hermes but for being a little bit slow he's kind of quicker than the rest of us yeah. 138 here said he the name of the Son of God is great and without bounds and the whole world is supported by it if therefore said I every creature of God be sustained by his son why should he not support those also who have been invited by him and who carry his name and walk in his commandments? So these people who are going into the tower are built on his foundation. He, he is the foundation of the tower. The tower would be nothing without him. And, you know, what does it say? His name carries all of the world. What does it say? Carries what? His name is great and without bounds and the whole world is supported by it. The whole world is supported by his name. So Again, that, go ahead. That reminds me of when we were first introduced into the virgins and it said that, you know, they had their they they looked manly as if the whole world is yeah. you know, they're they're supporting the whole whole Excellent power. point. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're right. That brings uh back hand in hand that the name of the Son of God, you know, goes with the virgins. Exactly. Good point, good point. Okay. Number one thirty nine. See it thou not, said he that he doth support them, who with all their heart bear his name. He therefore is their foundation, and gladly support those who do not deny his name, but willingly bear it. Okay, so going back to, like you said, the name is, the, the name of, of the Son of God is the name of the virgins, is the twelve virtues. And and so that's what he's telling telling him here. He is therefore the foundation. These virtues are the foundation for this tower. This is this is the main this is the main purpose of this tower is to get us through the tribulation and into the millennial age. And that is the foundation of that tower that's going to make it is these twelve virtues. Yeah, and it's saying that he supports those who carry his carry on his name. If you put on his your, the name of the Father, for, from what I'm getting from this. Is that he is going to support you? Yeah, he's going to support you, right? That's absolutely right. All right, so you want to stop there? Yep, we're going to end it on 139. Praise you, Lord.